Hey guys, welcome back to Real Housewives Recaps. Today, we're talking, say it with me, three, two, one, revenge. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. I'm so excited to dive into this part of the book. A lot of you guys were commenting along with me saying this part gets good. I'm excited. So we're going to get into, we're going to pick back up with chapter 26. We're going to go all the way through chapter 27. We got lots to talk about including that big stupid baby shower she had and planning her exit, her mexit, if you will. So we're going to get into all that. Thank you guys again for being here. Seriously, thank you for everything. All right, let's dive into revenge. Before I do, I do want to say Patreon. Check out my Patreon. So much fun stuff going on over there. Not only do I do deep dives on sex in the city, so if you're a fan of that, check that out. But I also have been posting a bunch of Harry and Meghan stuff over there. Don't worry, channel's staying the same. I totally get it. Not, you know, it's not for everybody, but he posts bonus stuff over there. I've been recording and having so much fun and a lot of laughs and it's a little more uncensored over there. You can become an executive producer. I have a lots of you guys to shout out later on in the show. We'll get there, but let's get into revenge. Chapter 26, exposure. So remember we left off, it was about February 2019, People Magazine had come out and Megan decided she needed to fight back the media. People are being mean to her. So what does she do? She goes to the media, <laughs> right? You can't make this stuff up. So they go to the media to fight back against people fighting her in the media. I'm saying it like that because I'm trying to make it make sense and I can't, hey, make it make sense. Check out my merch. I make it make sense merch. I promise I didn't do that on purpose. I just find myself saying that all the time when discussing Harold and Fraud, Hank and Skank. So uh, check out the merch. Make it make sense. Okay. But yeah. So she's trying to fight back the media by using the media. Again, hello, Spare. Same thing. Fight back against every grievance ever written in crayon and, and using the media to do it. But then accusing the media of being mean to her. Hmm. Sure. She also wanted to spend everything as all Thomas's fault. She decided that she would share excerpts of the letter that she had written Thomas that clearly was meant to be shared to the world. She can deny it all she wants, but we all can see through that. She wanted to paint herself as a loving daughter who is seeking reconciliation. Well, we discussed this in the last episode that that's clearly not what she was trying to do. Again, you just can't go by anything that Harold and Fraud say. Everything's a lie. They live in their own little world. So this article, she thought, ooh, I'll speak back against the media, but I'll do it through my friends. And I'm using, again, Joey's air quotes on that one because it's Megan, right? It's Megan through all of it. It's Megan through speaking through here. It's Megan speaking through Spare. But she decided to put up parts of the letter to her dad. Uh, she basically shared it with her friends and then had them recite parts of it in this People Magazine article. Now, here's the fun part. This is the part that I find juicy. It's because of this, because of her not playing by the rules. And what I mean there is the palace... There's a lot of talk in this part of the book about the palace staff was there to help her including they have, of course, a press office, a press department, whatever you want to call it, that was there and ready to help. But she <laughs> she has to do her own thing. She only wants to use the palace when it's convenient for her. Where have we heard this before? It's the same thing she does with people. She'll use them. She'll decide she doesn't need them anymore and then cut them out. So that seems to be what she did with the palace press that were there trying to help. Of course, Megan claims she got no help. That's a whole other story. But because of this, this is the part that I love. She thought, I'm clever. I'm, I'm going to do what I want because she's Cartman. Um, she decided to use this publication to filter out parts of her letter to her dad. And because of that, it ended up becoming public domain. And that's the leg that they had to stand on with her dad's side, which we'll get to, but I'm just saying, go with me here on the big picture. This is the reason that Thomas was able then to go to the media and share the letter. Because Megan started it first, but Megan will never see it like that, right? Megan is always a victim. Everybody else is wrong. She is free to speak up to the press whenever she feels like it, but 
condemns people like her dad who are trying to speak up to the press, not first, but almost as a, a rebuttal, a way to clear his own name. So just think about that, because again, it's that's the kind of stuff that keeps me riveted, you guys. I just, there's no logic there. It's all narcissism. It's all their own truth. I'm sitting here just shaking my head. I wish you, could, I wish you were here with me. Like, we <laughs> crack open one and <laughs> have a conversation about why I am riveted by this stuff, but I truly am. It's fascinating. It's like serial killer stuff, right? It's wild. Okay, so again, she put out, she shared this letter with her friends who gave this interview, and so parts of the letter were recited back in this interview. Clearly, Megan had a hand in it. She can deny it all she wants. These friends, I'm laughing because these friends tried to rebut all negative things said about Megan, but, you know, like that would take however many millennia to do. (laughs) So they tried to rebut things like the staff bullying claims. You know how they did this? They used evidence of Megan providing ice cream for her staff as her being a great boss. (laughs) And I'm just laughing because I believe Harry did the same thing when he was talking about Megan. He brought up that she brought she bought her staff ice cream, you guys, so she can't be a monster, right? I mean, think about all the stories we've heard. I don't want to go too dark, but just think about all the stories we've heard of horrible partners doing horrible things to the other one, and then, oh, you buy flowers afterwards, right? I mean, it's just, it's that. <laughs> So here's some ice cream. Oh, also in the retelling of this buying ice cream, it's not like, hey, you know, we got the staff, a nice ice cream treat, an ice cream truck, I think came, something like that. No. According to Megan's camp, the staff cheered and said it was the best day. That's a very sad description, right? I doubt that that, <laughs> I doubt that they, they did that. I just, it just doesn't make sense. Make it make sense. She's saying that the the demands claims were being sensationalized, and so they were trying to combat that. She also tried to start, this is when she started boosting her self-importance, and again, love Tom Bauer. He succinctly says, by doing that, she's not even afraid to put down Harry and talked about how she was there to help him write his speeches. Because, you know, he'd never done that before her. Although after reading Spare, I bet that guy needs all the help he can get. You can barely read his crayon writing in his coloring books, right? (laughs) I can only imagine. So the letter we've discussed at length in other episodes, you can go watch those, but it's the very contrived, controlled handwriting and everything else. It's the way it's meant to tug at the heartstrings, all that. Well, in the People Magazine article, it spun as an attempt to reconcile with dad. Well, we know the truth. She tried to say that he hadn't been trying to get in touch with her, that he still knew her phone number and never bothered to call. She implied that he was lying over his health concerns and the possible surgery that he had, that sort of thing, even though he openly discussed the surgery he was going in. He even talks about the hospital he was at. Um, Interesting how, again, everybody else is lying except for Harold and Fraud, Hank and Skank. So she also claims that she looked out for everyone financially. Again, this continues to come up. It's her favorite thing to claim. Tom Bauer is saying that this whole thing, all these rebuttal points, of course, came from Megan. We know this. She's pretending like it's through these five friends, but it's from Megan. Hello. No one could understand Megan's plan. The palace was upset by her taking this on, not involving them. And it just, she's her own worst enemy, right? And it is funny. Just I just think about, you know, they always talk about, Megan's invasion of privacy, I guess both of their invasion of privacy, but the only one invading privacy is themselves. They tell every detail of everything, right? So we wouldn't know all this stuff if those two, you know, asshats would stop speaking up. So as we've also heard before, once again, Knopf gets a call, uh, gets lots of calls from the media and he just answers back, no comment, no comment. Well, Megan is very pissed about this. She thinks he should be, I don't know, she just likes to control everything. So it's like he should be giving all the answers that she has written out for him to give. She thinks he works for her directly, and that's not his job. He works on behalf of the palace, the royal family in general, not Meghan Markle. So, of course, Megan doesn't 
understand that. So she thinks he should be giving these canned answers that she's written for him. So she's getting increasingly pissed. So again, fun place to work, right? Sounds great. Thomas is feeling so misrepresentative misrepresented by all this and says that the tone of the letter that they present in the people magazine article is not the tone of the letter that he received and that it's the same thing we all say like they everything's a spin with these two nothing's real they spin it their way and that's that everybody else is wrong so he decides he just has to publish it so he fought back he showed the letter to the mail on Sunday, and that's where that lawsuit ends up coming from. Harry and Megan sued the mail on Sunday. It was actually their parent company, but um, for publishing the letter, even though clearly Megan intended for it to get out. But guys, how else will they look like the victims? How else, right? They've always got to find a way. Nothing's ever their fault. Thomas fought. So when Thomas showed this letter, the argument was, is that... Thomas was entitled to dispute the stories. So that's the part that I just, I like to think about a lot is they use the press. I don't, I'm not trying to make sense out of it because you can't, but I'm just saying it's just so fascinating to me. These two hate the press. If you don't believe me, listen to every other word that they that comes out of their mouth, right? They, they claim to hate the press, right? But they use the press. Except for when the press says one wrong thing about them, then the press goes back to evil. They're allowed to use the press to say or do whatever they want. Spare, right? (laughs) Uh, People Magazine, right? And if anybody dare do the same to them, well, then that person's just evil or prejudice of some sort. You can imagine what ist I'm going with, right? Like that just is, that's their only argument. It's, it just blows my mind. No intelligent person can follow that that train of thought. It just, it doesn't make it make sense. You can't, (laughs) you can't. So Megan clearly intended on that letter being leaked from the contrived handwriting, like we discussed to the pulling of the heartstrings with the wording, every we've discussed it. Megan is spinning though as, Oh, I can't believe the mail on Sunday leaked my letter. It's just continued campaign to publish false and derogatory stories about her And then what does she do? Calls it one of the is that she loves to say, right? Her favorite word because she can't think of anything else to call them. So she has to go into race stuff where nobody else is going, but it's her favorite thing to do. It was also during this time that she persuaded George Clooney to get out and speak on her behalf. So she doesn't want to, I'm sorry, you got to find it funny. She doesn't want to use these trained palace officials whose job it is to get out there and speak on behalf of the royal, you know, among other jobs, but you know what I'm saying. But yet she wants to use George Clooney because she seems to, she must be getting dumber because of Harry. I don't know. Like that seems like a teenager mentality. I'm going to get the famous guy to speak up for me and everybody will be persuaded. So she gets George Clooney to give some statement where the media is blasted and he ends up comparing Megan to Diana. Well, at the mention of Megan and Diana in the same sentence, you know, Harry's off in the corner with his Elizabeth Arden cream. Ew. Okay. So Tom Bauer points out there was no intrusion by the press into her private life, especially at this time. She was pregnant with Archie and he even points out there was not a single unapproved picture of Megan while she was pregnant. Megan's biggest invasion of privacy was herself. So Megan argued that she had the right to speak, but, you know, clearly it's just for her. Nobody else is allowed to speak because she blows a gasket if her father's dare, if her father dares do the same. Megan convinced Harry to abandon the royal press offices altogether and to use press out of California. Hmm. Yeah. Don't know why we think they've all set. This is all a plan that they've set up, right? They want to have their own social media presence. We'll get to that because it's coming. Don't worry. All right. So then we get into chapter 27, baby shower. She is, I think they said about eight months pregnant at this time. She decided that because she had so few friends in London, Imagine that, that she decided to go to America to hang out with her acquaintances. 
over there. So she wants to go over and plot her destiny. Amazing. And I'm going to say Tom Bauer points this out. So don't come for me. I don't care. Tom Bauer points this out so beautifully. He says, amazing how her depression seems to have cleared during this time because we don't have further mention of that stuff that we were talking about in the last episode. Megan asked her good friend, and by that I mean acquaintance, Serena Williams' publicist, to arrange her baby shower for her. The gall on this woman. Can you imagine? Who doesn't have good enough friends that will just handle it for you? And I'm sorry, but when you get into that much money and privilege, do you need a baby shower? You need your friends buying you stuff? Ask for donations to go to charity. Whatever. Like... It's just ridiculous. Over the top ridiculous. I don't even begrudge her going to see her friends, but we're going to get into what this was. This was more of a publicity stunt for all involved. So she asked them to throw this party. They agreed. And it was a launch pad for a group of friends to exploit her status. That was Tom Bauer's words, not mine. And I say that because I think, did she have status? I guess at that point, maybe. Okay, so we had people like Gail King, Amal Clooney, that Misha, Misha, sorry, Nanu, and Jessica Mulroney. So Megan decided to use this time to list her grievances. Sure, happy occasion. Why let the baby take center stage, right? You should be listing your grievances. Sounds like a really fun baby shower. And she loved the extravagance. She was determined to get her money's worth. She, they all decided, it's so funny to look at pictures. You know, if you really wanted to have an intimate baby shower, fine. That's not what this was. They made a point of having their cars pull around front and having press. The press that they pretend to hate, they had a special area for the press to stand and take pictures as they each make their grand entrance. Of course they did. Ah. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. I'm so glad you guys are here and get me because I feel it. I feel your frustration, too. It's fun. Okay, so the following day, a lot of this group... Each went out and did their own interviews about the baby shower. Again, sounds like fun, huh? All publicity. It sounds like an Instagram baby shower, right? Something you just do for the gram? I don't know. I'm a thousand. I don't know. <laughs> but it just, it's all for show. None of it's real. its These aren't like your good friends that you went to high school, college, whatever with and grew up with. These are celebrities who are making money off of each other. So two days after returning to London, after this big baby shower, she and Harry flew to Morocco. Things are tough, guys. She had to go from, you know, to America and then to Morocco. Don't you feel sorry for them? They'll try to get you feel sorry for them. (laughs) She claims that they needed extra protection by using a private jet. And listen, let me put, let me be clear about this because I don't know if I've cleared this up. I don't care who uses private jets. Hell, great. Have fun. That's not what bothers me. What bothers me is we're about to get to it, but they started giving these speeches about how important it is for global warming and all, you know, I don't get political here, but you know where I'm going with this. Like lots of pandering stuff about climate and stuff like that while flying around in their private jets. Interesting, right? I would like to remind you, too, that when she was had the TIG, she made a post about the importance of protecting the Earth. Meanwhile, Harry and Meghan had flown, like, I think it was like seven times in eight weeks back and forth to see each other. So, yeah, how's that uh, protecting the Earth going? Again, the rules don't apply to them. Just like everybody else in Holly Weird, right? So the New York trip had sealed her fate. Obviously, she started getting the ball rolling. Then she got in touch with Vogue and decided that she was going to promote her charity, a charity that she had just joined a few months before. And the editor of Vogue came over to her place. Uh, I guess I think they said not caught. I don't know where they're living. Who cared? No, it was there at Frogmore this time. So the editor of Vogue came out to meet with her and to visit with her. And this is where it gets interesting because Tom even points out they have differing accounts of how this went down. So I would like to be a fly on the wall. I feel like Maggie Poo, 
tried to exert too much control and the Vogue guy was not having it. And (laughs) I just wonder how that all went. But he came to her place and Megan, according to Megan, which I don't believe anything she says, but her side of the story is that she pitched an idea to guest edit an issue. The editor, his name escapes me, but I'll flash him on the screen, said that it was his idea. I don't care. Somebody had the idea that she should work on the September issue. Megan decided, yeah, I'm going to do this, but I'm not going to tell the palace about it. Why, why would I respect anybody? Why would I abide by years and years of traditions and everything else and be respectful and let them know, hey, I got a piece I'm working on. And yet again, she flashed forward. Her thing was nobody was there to help her, but it sure sounds like she wasn't doing anything to help them while she was there. Why would she, right? Why would she? Okay, let's get into the next chapter. Chapter 28, wellness. So Harry, at this point, I love this quote so much, I wrote it down. Harry became an empty royal cipher. (laughs) What do I mean? Well, Megan was filling him up with her ideas. Harry's so dumb, he didn't even stop to question anything. He was just like, oh, okay, Meg. I just turned him into Al Bundy. Okay, Meg. So Harry started to speak his pseudo profundo jabber. Harry started giving climate change speeches and taking helicopters and private jets to go give them. You guys, that kills me. Every time I hear of a celebrity doing that, it's just no self-awareness whatsoever. He started to have unpredictable contrarian behavior at everything. So again, this is his, I mean, his whole attitude just changing. Everybody sees it. They go into stories of how he was meant to go to these different events and try to, you know, schmooze with donors and stuff like that. But instead, he decided to make it his own little soapbox and throw childlike temper tantrums. Again, I refer you to Spare. That's pretty much That's the book review I would give it. (laughs) It's a childlike temper tantrum. Also during this time, they lost another member of staff. Amy Piccarella had stuck in there for one year. That lady deserves an award because that's a lot. But guys, I don't know why she left. She obviously had an amazing ice cream social. She cheered and said it was the best day ever if you ask Hank and Skank about it. She should have been able to ignore all the tea throwing and tantrums. She should have just... uh, Enjoyed the ice cream socials. But the queen was still trying to keep the peace. Love the queen. And she sent in Lord Gite to try to help embed Meghan into the royal family. Help her stop being such a mess. This is about the time frame where we really see the antagonism of the Sussexes. They, they just can't stand the palace anymore. It's good enough for them when they need things from it, but it's not good when they don't get exactly what they want. Megan is wanting to re-engage people online. She wants to, I don't know, start back up the TIG. She, who knows? But she wanted to do this. So this is where Sussex Royal sprouted up. So she wanted to be able to answer people immediately and to be able to use it to get attention. So then we go to early March 2019. This is where she denied reading any social media about herself. Do you remember that interview she gave where she's like, no. No, I don't do that. It was very condescending the way that she spoke. Like, no, I would not do that. No, I would not read social media. <laughs> don't look at you it. You never look at, say, Twitter. No. <laughs> Sorry, no. Um, you know, and I, for me, that is my personal preference, right? But I do read The Economist. Um, <laughs> so I'll give you that one. Thank you. Um, yes. <laughs> Oh, please, Rich. You are on social media more than the rest of us combined. Come on. So she's planning a secret move to California. This is about the time that they believe that that is starting to happen. Oh, also at that meeting, that's where she announced that the baby in her belly, whether it's a boy or a girl, was already a feminist. Take that how you will. So it was about this time, again, where they believed that the secret planning to move to California was happening, and Oprah interview, they were starting to plan that. And Oprah wanted to sweeten the deal to get these two talking to her, and I'm thinking, 
she probably didn't have to do shit to sweeten that deal. You know, especially Megan was chomp well, both of them chomping at the bits to try to get the attention any way that they can. And of course, to talk to Oprah. Why else would they invite a complete stranger, Oprah, to their wedding, right? Why else? And again, I point you to present day where Oprah didn't feel the need to invite them to her birthday party. It's hilarious. So Oprah tries to sweeten the deal by saying, listen, if you'll do this interview with me, I will produce a show with Harry about mental health. I remember hearing about that. It was supposed to be an episodic show um, about mental health, mental health awareness. Again, it's interesting that he's talking about that, but yet, as Bauer points out, he was not there for his wife very much in terms of getting her help when she was struggling with mental health. They can only blame the palace, but they don't take anything on themselves to try to, you know, take action to help themselves. Then we see more of this. Oh, any critic that rejects their truth, I'm using the quotation marks again, they are prejudiced. We've heard this before. The press office got Sarah Lantham in. She is brand new. She's had a long history of working with the press, but she's new to the position. She came in, and on the 14th of March, there was an announcement made that the era of the Fab Four was over. We knew behind the scenes it had fallen apart, but that was the official announcement that the Fab Four were done. I am so impressed by William and Catherine for lasting even that long. That's They had showed so much restraint during then. I just, yeah, that's a long time. So at Su- Sussex Royal, I just always want to say sucks in there because those two Sussexes suck. So I, my apologies to anybody that lives in Sussex. I've talked to a couple of you who say it's lovely and that you enjoy it and that you hate that those t- uh, are tied in any way to Sussex. <laughs> that sucks. But Sussex Royal was born and and it launched on Instagram. Bauer goes into the stats. They had about a million followers in the first six hours, and they had five million a year later. And Tom Bauer's a petty bitch, just like I am. And I love him for that because he points out that the Cambridges had 7.4 million followers. I normally wouldn't chuckle at something like that because who cares, but I find it very funny. They announced, oh, okay, so they took to the new Sussex Royal handle to announce Harry's new project a dynamic multi-part project on mental health working with oprah so they lock that in there thus sealing their fate they i mean we already knew this but sealing the fate that they would absolutely be giving that oprah interview and cutting ties with the royal family essentially so but they sure did not want to cut ties with those titles they're holding on to those with dear life so that's it for me you guys oh so much. That was some good chapters. I enjoyed this review very much. I'm so glad you're all here. I want to give a huge shout out to my Patreon, patreon.com backslash Real Housewives Recaps. We got executive producers over there. A huge thank you to Kristen, to Linda, to Melissa, to Paige, Teresa, Mary, and to Amy. You guys are the best. I appreciate you so much. I truly do. Thank you for being there. If you're new to the $10 tier, don't worry. I will get you in the shout outs very soon, but thank you so much. If you want to become uh, an executive producer and you want to shout out, join Patreon. I'll show you. You'll see how to do it. It's amazing. You get access to all our videos, plus you get a shout out. So check that out. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Check out the merch. Make it make sense. (laughs) Recollections may vary. I love that so much still. I have so much of that at my house. I love it. And thank you for everything. I just appreciate you all so much. I'm loving this deep dive and I don't know. We have, we still have some more to go, but We'll jump over to Cordia's next, so start thinking about that. I'm excited. I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.